Hi, I'm Christopher Gonda from Keep Middlesex Moving, and I'm the coordinator of the Safe Routes to School program. Today with me is Reggie Wright from East Brunswick Police Department, and tell them a little bit about yourself. Hi, my name is Reggie Wright. I work for the East Brunswick Police Department Community Policing Unit. I've been working for East Brunswick Police Department for 10 years since 2010. Prior to East Brunswick, I worked for Washington Township in Long Valley, New Jersey. I'm here today, like Chris mentioned, to discuss distracted driving. As part of my responsibilities in the Community Policing Unit, I teach a program called Share the Keys. Share the Keys is a program that focuses on teen drivers between the ages of 15 and 19. Teen drivers between the ages of 15 and 19, where I talk with the drivers and the parents in regards to distracted driving and how distracted driving is a leading cause of death for teens between the ages of 15 and 19. So please, please tune in for the next 20 to 25 minutes as we talk to you about how you can be proactive and how we can prevent motor vehicle crashes that are caused by distracted driving. Now, Keep Middlesex Moving is a nonprofit dedicated to uh, decreasing traffic, improving air quality, as well as um, giving other people options uh, from how to get from point A to point B. Uh, my, my specific program is about supporting kids who walk and bike to school. So one of our highest concerns at KMM is also safety. Mm -hmm. So being that distracted driving is uh, such a hot topic and it's something that everyone talks about in regard to safety on our roads, mm -hmm. um, it's important for us to bring this message to our folks at home to do whatever we can as our organizations are both concerned with public safety and decreasing the amount of fatalities on the road. Uh, so we're here to bring this message to you today and we hope you all take it to heart. Um, now, a few weeks ago, I was with my wife and we were at her sister's house and we were watching my little nephew and he was running through the yard. Now, he's only a year and a half old, so he's still just kind of learning how yeah. to walk, right? And his feet will take him in one direction, but his eyes and upper body are looking someplace else. Right. So he's moving in one direction, but his eyes are completely focused on something else. And being that I work in transportation safety, it clicked. And this is uh, a thought in my mind that made me realize that's what distracted driving looks like. Mm -hmm. When we have our mind set on a destination, but in the midst of it, our attention is someplace completely different. Absolutely. And that causes a lot of, um, well, for my nephew, it poses a few risks for him to, to trip or fall or to run into something. But being behind a vehicle that weighs tons of pounds, um, the, the damage that could be done from taking your eyes off the road and attention off of where you're actually going uh, can be huge. Absolutely. So, um, yeah. But in the state of New Jersey, distract, distracted driving was a con contributing factor in half of the vehicular crashes over the last five years uh, in our state and on our roads. So we're not talking about just a few hundred crashes or a handful of crashes. Uh, distracted drivers caused 700,000 crashes uh, wow. in the state of New Jersey yeah, over yeah. the course of five years. Almost 1,000 of those crashes were fatal. Mm. And that's nearly 200 fatal crashes per year. But when we think about it, 100% of these fatalities were caused by human behavior and are preventable. Um, so for that, there's not really any excuse. Absolutely. And if I, if I could chime in on that, Chris. Also, obviously, as I mentioned earlier, I teach uh, Share the Keys with a presentation for teen safety driving. And one of the things in New Jersey that's, uh, that's really been plaguing us, our society uh, at large, is the fact that teen drivers have been killed uh, over the last... 10 years at a rate of about 550, nearly 550 teens have been killed over a span of, of 10 years, drivers and passengers alike. And when you think about that, you think about the fact that our road consists about 7% of the drivers on the road, 7% of the drivers on the road are teens. Out of that 7%, about 11% of the drivers cause crashes in the state of New Jersey. So as Chris just mentioned, this is huge, this is vital to understand that this is something that's preventable, something that we can avoid. And when we think about the numbers a little bit more, here in Middlesex County, um, we've accounted for one-tenth of those crashes, uh, one-tenth of those distracted driver crashes in the state. Uh, now, New Jersey has 21 counties. Uh, but here in Middlesex County, we have a density of highways and roads and a density, of, uh, a higher population density that contributes to those crashes happening here on our roads in, in the county. 
Absolutely. So, like we said, none of these crashes are acceptable. We don't want anyone dying on the roads. It's absurd. People are just trying to go from one place to another. Um, so as transportation professionals, whenever we hear about uh, someone being struck by a vehicle or involved in a crash, uh, it breaks our hearts. And so that's why we're here to bring this message home, to educate folks uh, at home and in schools, uh, to, to cut down those number of crashes throughout um, not just the state, but wherever this message will be broadcast. Absolutely. Yeah, and if I could, again, chime in on that, when we talk about motor vehicle crashes, as an officer for the last 16 years, I've been a first responder, and I've been on the scene of multiple motor vehicle crashes where I've seen teens, adults, and children injured, and it's something that I would never want anyone to ever have to experience. For you parents that are watching, Kylie's Law was a motor vehicle crash that I was a part of. I was a first responder on scene for that motor vehicle crash. It was something I will never forget. I will never forget as a first responder what it was like to arrive on scene for that motor vehicle crash and to be alone for several minutes while I watch and witness uh, these young teens uh, laying there helpless um, and just seeing the looks on the faces of other officers as they respond. This is something that can be prevented. Distracted driving is something that is definitely preventable. And I don't want to have to be an officer that ever has to come to someone's house and make notification that something has happened to their child, whether they've been killed or they've been injured. This is something that's definitely preventable. So please continue to listen to the things that Chris and I are saying because it's so important for the safety of your children. Now, we keep throwing around the term distracted driving. And yes, it is somewhat given um, regard to what we're talking about. Are we just talking about cell phone use? No, absolutely not. There's a lot more than, than cell phone use that goes into distracted driving. Cell phone use is one component, but there's mm. so many other things that can go into it. Sometimes you have mothers that are on their way to taking their kids to school or they're, they're putting makeup on. We've had calls uh, throughout the police department where people have motor vehicle crashes because they spilled coffee on themselves. It's so many different things that play a role into distracted driving that can cause one to get in a motor vehicle crash. And the consequences of that are sometimes something that can't be recovered from. Yeah, and from what we're talking about, m distracted driving can be caused by uh, any distractions that are visual, which take your eyes off the road, or manual, which take your hands off the wheel, or cognitive, which take your mind off of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So when we think about something like texting while driving, that hits all three of those bullets for visual, manual, and cognitive distractions, Absolutely. which makes cell phones so dangerous. Now, drivers, they're up against a lot in regard to their attention being on the road. Um, not only do they have to see the other vehicles moving and share the road with, with everyone else who are out there and anticipate every move that everyone's going to make, but with our cell phones, there's an addictive nature to them that makes it even more difficult. Whether it's sitting in your passenger seat or whether the cell phone is mounted to your dashboard, the, there will be notifications and alerts and alarms that are always calling for your attention. Uh, from the many apps that are designed to grab your attention, um, or just the cell phone itself, or worrying about uh, what your family is doing at home, right? Absolutely. And I think one of the things, too, is for you parents that's listening that you can also do, as Chris just mentioned about the, the apps that come on your phone that's trying to grab your attention, you can make sure you go into the settings on your iPhone and make sure that you turn your phone off so that when you're driving, it's in driving mode, that you won't have those distractions that he's talking about. And it allows you to focus mentally and visually on the road and what you're doing. So having a feature on my app that tells me where to go can definitely be a useful tool for me as I'm driving. Um, it's not like the old days where we had big paper maps that, that we would look at as <laughs> yeah. we moved along, right? Yeah. Uh, now it, we have turn by turn directions and things like that. Uh, but I find that the tools are only so effective in regard to keeping us safe while we're on the road. They're not gonna tell us about um, everything that comes up for one, but they don't themselves keep us from getting distracted. Right. Um, one of the apps I use for navigation, what it'll do is when I'm at a stoplight, it'll drop down an ad for a local coffee shop, wow. letting me know that this coffee shop is on my way and here's a deal for coffee for you to stop there and get something. So we're coming up against the, the technology in a variety of ways. And yes, there are tools that will allow you to drive more safely by, by shutting off the app, but the developers don't always support those tools and it's really up to us who are driving and, and the users to activate them. Yeah. Um, so th there are a few other things that we can do to keep ourselves safer, to prevent ourselves from being as distracted from these apps. Uh, one of the things is 
knowing where we're going beforehand. Yes, we can have turn-by-turn -turn directions, but it helps to preview where you're going first. Um, because, like we said, crashes can happen uh, w in the blink of an eye. Absolutely. So we may intend to get there at a certain time, but if we don't give ourselves enough time to get there safely um, and something happens, we'll get rerouted. Right. So the phone or app might tell us to go a different way. So we should never anticipate the, to get there um, at a certain time without giving ourselves extra time to get ready first and to prepare and to have an idea of where we're going. Absolutely. And I think that goes into just being responsible. You know, as, as drivers behind the wheel, whether we're adults or teens, we have to be responsible for our actions. And one of the things I teach in the school is I teach a lead curriculum as law enforcement against drugs. And one of the lessons talks about decision making. It talks about you have to make good decisions. You have two types of decisions we can make in life, good decisions or bad decisions. They both yield consequences. And what Chris is talking about, if we don't make good decisions, it could yield negative consequences. Bad decisions yield negative consequences. So like Chris just mentioned, if you know where you're going prior to starting up your car, prior to driving, and you don't need that turn by turn, that good decision, that extra time of being responsible could alleviate or prevent you from being in a motor vehicle crash. Now, with these crashes and distracted driving, who's at risk? Everyone. Everyone. So anyone who's on the road, whether you are walking, or biking, or driving with your child to, to daycare or to school. Um, anyone who's in that shared space with a distracted driver is at risk. So when it comes to making those good decisions and being responsible, the most responsible action you could take is to not look at your phone, put it down, and focus on where we're going. Uh, because our minds and our eyes should be towards that destination versus looking in one direction and traveling in another. And adding to that, for those of you that have children, it's important to, to be aware that they're also watching you. So when they're in the back seat, in the car seat, or next to you in the passenger seat, they're looking to see what you're doing. If you're using your cell phone, whether it's to, for directions or whether it's just answering the telephone because you feel like you have to take this call, remember you're setting an example for them. It's important to remember that. Kids are well aware from a very young age of what we call the 11th commandment. The 11th commandment is do as I say, not as I do. Don't do that. We need to be role models. We need to be role models for them. So make sure that your actions and the decisions that you're making are setting a good example for your children. You're absolutely right. And when I go to schools and I give presentations to elementary school students um, and middle school students, you know, one of the things that we do is put up a picture of a distracted driver, or ask them what a distracted driver looks like. Mm -hmm. And they all can identify and tell me what a distracted driver is doing. And often they'll gesture a phone in front of them, texting with another hand on the steering wheel. So kids have seen it. Yes. And um, I've even had kids raise their hand and tell me, my daddy does that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So they, they are watching. And, and as role models, parents definitely set the precedent for uh, what their children should be doing. But I mean, on a human level, yeah, my, my son, he knows when I'm doing what I'm supposed to behind the wheel. He can tell me when the lights are red, and he's only three years old. Um, but just the other day, we were, we were sitting, I was getting him set up in the car, and then I had many other things going on, so I was loading the car with, with bikes and, and other things, and I sat down, and he says, Daddy, you forgot to put on my safety belt. Oh, yeah. yeah. As a safety professional, oh, man, that's uh, a bit of a shame for me. But Yeah, it's, it's essential. <laughs> and. And my son has taken numerous courses uh, on safety, pedestrian safety, bike safety. So he understands things like Chris was mentioning. And oftentimes I get into my car and I'm in the driveway. I'm literally in the driveway of my house and I'll pull out the driveway. And as I'm pulling out the driveway, I don't have my seatbelt on yet. I'll put my seatbelt on as I'm getting ready to go into the roadway. And he'll say things to me. My son is now nine, but he would say this to me when he was six or seven. He would say, Daddy, you're supposed to put your, your seatbelt on before you start driving. And he's absolutely correct. He's holding me accountable when I should be holding him accountable for his actions. But that just shows you that's an example that kids watch exactly what you do. So he knows, Daddy, before you start this car, before you start driving, you should have your seatbelt on. So he's holding me accountable, Chris. Yeah, and as drivers, and as anyone who, who uses the road, for me, I'm an avid cyclist, so I'll also ride my bike on the roads as well to get where I need to or just to get my workout. But the one thing that scares me when I'm out on the road, whether it be me behind the wheel or on the wheels of my bike, 
it's distracted drivers. Absolutely. Because I know I'm out there doing what I'm supposed to be doing, and I'm holding myself accountable. And when I'm on my bike, I can be highly visible. I can be communicating everything I'm doing in the, on the road and riding predictably. But if someone is distracted and doesn't see me, that's my biggest worry. Because as a father, whenever I hear about similar men being involved in these crashes and not coming out um, in, in a great condition, it scares the heck out of me. Yeah, yeah, and, and it, it should. I mean, because again, this is something that is literally preventable. You know, there's, there's stories after story after story when you hear of motor vehicle crashes. There was one years ago, and I don't know all the particulars, there was one years ago when a student was driving to school. She was driving to school on her way for a class trip. And on the way to the class trip, she got distracted. She knows she was running late. So since she was running late, she picked up her phone. She wanted to text, text a student, text a faculty member, whatever, let them know, I'm running late. I'm going to be there. Please don't allow the bus to leave. Hmm. As she texts, you actually, when you text, you, put, you look down. Obviously, she looked down when you look back up. Your car is either going to veer it to the right, veer it to the left. The car veered to the right, and she struck. She struck a man and his dog, and she killed both of them. And as you're just mentioning, that one second, those three to five seconds, whatever, she put her head down to text and put her head back up, took someone's life. It goes back to decision making. The decision, pull over. Pull over if you have to send that text message. Be late. But it's better to be safe than be sorry, as the old saying goes. Yeah, absolutely. So as someone who works in the, the field of public safety mm -hmm. and community engagement, um, and it's those things are written to everything you do as a community policing officer. Uh, tell me more about how the share the keys message works and uh, where you go with that message. Right. So share the keys obviously is for teen drivers. Teens between the ages of 15 to 19, motor vehicle crashes is the leading cause of death. So again, 15 to 19 year olds, the leading cause of death is motor vehicle crashes. And obviously the leading cause of that is due to the fact that they're distracted when they're driving. Mm -hmm. They're distracted, like you said, by cell phone use. They're distracted by their radio, whether they're turning the radio up or down. There was a crash years ago in Mercy County where a gentleman had a car, he had a, a sound system with subwoofers and everything in it. He looked down to turn the radio up. And when he looked back up, his vehicle had veered over and crossed the WL lines. He went head on with a tractor trailer and he ended up killing himself. Again, this is due to distracted driving. So with Share the Keys, we want to educate not only the teens, we want to educate the parents. And mm. we want the parents to understand there's something important. It's something that's called Share the Keys. What does that mean? What does it mean to share the keys? When I was growing up, my grandmother's an old lady from Corinth, Mississippi. She's about five feet, four inches. She's not that big. I'm 6'3", about 205. I'm five foot four inches. <laughs> <laughs> but to my grandmother, to me, she was, she was six feet, six inches. Yeah. because she meant what she said. So mm. when we talk about share the keys, we're talking about teens understanding they need to ask for permission. If you're my father, I can't just take this, this car and just go to Burger King and grab a meal. Mm. I have to come to you and say, Chris, may I please take this vehicle to Burger King? When teens know that they're closely monitored, they have rules that they have to follow, are half as likely to crash. Half as likely to crash. And that's because they know what's suspected of them. They know if they have to ask for permission, they know if they violate the rules that their parents have for them that the, the, per, the permission of using that vehicle, the privilege rather of using that vehicle is gonna be taken away from them. I see, so you're saying there's a bit of balance between supporting children in the conversation, in the situation, than controlling them in the situation. Absolutely, absolutely. So with Share the Keys, we talk about there's four components that a majority of parents fall into. There's four categories usually that they fall into. And one of those categories is you have parents that say, kids will be kids. Kids will be kids. They'll learn from their mistakes, right? So you don't, really, you don't really have that much monitoring going on there. Little to no support, little to no monitoring. You say, listen, if they make mistakes, they'll learn from it. Mm -hmm. There's another group of parents that say, listen, I know my child. I know my son. I know my daughter. They've done the right thing for the last 15, 16 years in life. I know they'll do the right thing. Mm -hmm. There's another group of parents that go, listen, you're going to follow my rules. I'm going to set many rules. I'm going to closely monitor everything that you do, and you're going to do as I say. There's another group that goes, I'm going to set some rules, closely monitor you. You're going to do as I say for the sake of safety. But as you earn my trust, you'll earn some freedom. Hmm. Right? So we would like to say with the Share the Keys program that that's the healthiest model. The healthiest model is you're going to do as I say because I'm your parent. 
and I'm here to teach you, to guide you, to instruct you. Yeah. But at the same time, as you show me that you're trustworthy, then I'll give you some leverage and give you some freedom. Yeah, I could definitely see that balance. Now, for new drivers, it could take some time to get used to a car, how it feels, uh, what it's like to, to make this turn here or there. Um, so what can you say to parents and to families about practicing? Well, practice is essential. It's just mm. like anything else in life. You know, the old saying, practice makes perfect. Now, we all know, no matter how much you practice, you'll never be perfect. So we're not striving for perfection, but we just want to be proficient at whatever it is that we do. So you want your children to practice a lot. They should practice in different elements, different environments. Mm. They should practice in the snow, the rain, the ice, when it's foggy, when it's cold, when it's hot, because obviously we know the road conditions change. It's not mm. only the elements different, but the road condition changes. So the more practice they have in these different elements and these different conditions, the more equipped they will be when they're out in the road by themselves. That's where the comfort level comes in. Okay, so we have in schools, they have driver's education, they may have private lessons that teach them how to drive and give them a little bit of practice there. But like you were saying, the parents are the, the primary role models for how um, we should behave behind the wheel, right? Absolutely. Um, so when, it comes to parents as instructors, what can you advise them in regard to maintaining a constructive and positive practice experience behind the wheel? Because we know that on the road, things can get frustrating. We can have uh, road rage incidents or people cutting us off. Uh, what would you tell parents in those situations? Yeah, so in regards to telling the parents about that, they have to be mindful that even when they're driving themselves and there's a road rage incident or someone cuts them off, again, your actions, you're modeling for your children or for your child. I've seen it my, my own self, my own two eyes. Again, my son is nine, he's in the fourth grade. There's been times when I'm driving and someone cuts me off. I'm like, why would you do that? Why, why would you do something like that? And then as you, a week ago by, a month ago by, and then someone cut me off again, and my nine-year-old at once was six or seven years old, will go, why would you do that? Why would you cut us off like that? Because he's <laughs> modeling what, he's, what he heard me say. So again, we have to be role models, again, it's important, it's so vital because when they're by themselves and they're on their own, you wanna make sure that they're conducting themselves appropriately. Again, make sure they practice. So role modeling is one, practice when you're taking, uh, when you're going to errands, running errands, grocery shopping, activities, different things like that. Make sure you take your kids with them. Let them drive, be with them. Uh, make sure you, you tell them what they should or shouldn't do. Put your seatbelt on as soon as you get in the car. Turn the radio off, put your cell phone on silent, put it in the glove box, put it in the center console. These are all things that can be done as preventive measures. Yeah, absolutely. So considering your background as a parent, as an instructor, um, and as a police officer, what is the number one um, piece of advice that you would offer teens and young drivers who are preparing to, to get out on the road? Right, so when you get into your, your vehicle, you have to understand that this vehicle is a weapon. It potentially mm -hmm. could be a weapon, it could be used um, f as a necessary means to get you from point A to point B. But if you don't use it in an appropriate manner, it can then become a weapon. And that's important because not only could you take your life, you could take the life of someone else. So the number one thing I would tell parents, tell young drivers, is focus on where you're going. Focus on where you're going. You're trying to go from point A to point B. Whether it's the cell phone, someone's calling you, someone's texting you, whether it's the person next to you that says, hey, did you see that over there? Stay focused. Be like a horse with blinders on. Obviously, you need to be aware of, of what you're doing and where you're going and see things around you. You have to drive for yourself and drive for others. But literally, be focused on where you're going. Don't let the other things around you distract you. Because again, if you make a decision to do something, and that decision is, is caused by something that's distracted you that you could have avoided, the consequence, consequence can be something that maybe you can't return from. And we don't want to see that. No, absolutely not. Um, again, when I bring safety messages to schools, uh, again, it's for other road users, whether they're people who are walking or biking, uh, to get from pla one place to another. We want them to also be aware and alert of, every of everything that's happening around them. Even a distracted pedestrian and distracted um, biking message goes into that. Not because it's the number one rule, because we want them to be aware of everything, but it it's worth saying and it's worth it for them to know that they should always focus on, on their destination as well, just Absolutely. like you had said. So as someone who's behind the wheel frequently, whether it be for work or to get where you need to go, what is your greatest fear on the road? Yeah, I mean, that's an extremely great question. I mean, I shared with you that for me, it's actually distracted drivers, but I'm wondering if it's any different for you. 
um, and your background as a police officer and doing what you do. Yeah, so I, I would say I think obviously not knowing uh, the habits of someone else, so not knowing mm -hmm. has this person consumed any alcoholic beverage? Are they driving while right. intoxicated? Are they driving under the influence of some kind of drug or narcotic? You really don't know. You don't know who's behind the wheel when you're mm -hmm. driving. So that's something that obviously um, we have to take into account as parents, as a police officer Absolutely. in general, is something Definitely. that uh, that really, you know, it, it makes you pause and makes you think. You know, when you do get from point A to point B, how grateful you are that you got from point A to point B. Because right. not everyone does. And obviously we know there's a lot of motor vehicle crashes that occur each and every day. And that's why I think it's important for, for parents of teen drivers in particular to realize that since this is a leading cause of death, it's also one of the leading causes of injuries. We have over 400,000 injuries in the state of New Jersey alone from teen drivers. So it's important. Again, parents, when, when teens understand that they need your permission, that they can't just do what they want, then that will really decrease them being aggressive drivers. That will decrease speeding. They will wear their seat belts. Because teens know if they violate the rules that the government has set, they're also violating the rules that you have set, and that's so important. It's yeah. extremely important. I knew for myself, Chris, with my grandmother, I knew that whatever expectation that she had, whatever rules that she set, I had to abide by them. And it didn't just start when I was driving a vehicle. It started when I was riding a bike. You're talking about you're, you're a cyclist. It really did. If I was riding a bike to go to the park and play basketball, because I loved playing basketball as a kid, mm. she would say, listen, I want you home by the time the streetlights come on. So I had to be responsible. So part of this is being distracted driving, being proactive. Part of it is just being disciplined. Yeah. You know, self-discipline and responsibility are character traits that play a role into, into this. If we're disciplined and we're responsible, then we'll make decisions that yield positive consequences. And she was teaching me that before I started driving when I was just riding a bicycle. Agreed. So a lot of these things, like we've been saying, start at home before they get behind the wheel. Absolutely. Uh, before they're even the age to get behind the wheel. Absolutely. So you mentioned speeding as something that you know, everyone should be aware of. How does that come into play in regard to vehicle crashes? How vital is a slower speed versus greater speed? I'm not a specialist when it comes to reconstructing motor vehicle crashes, hmm. but obviously the speeds are set for a reason because they understand if you abide by these speeds and they are known as the speed limit, so that means that people shouldn't go past it. <laughs> if yeah. they abide by the Even speed limit and they get involved in a motor vehicle crash, obviously it can really help reduce the injuries or even the fatalities that, that exist in the state of New Jersey and the U.S. at large. No, I absolutely agree. And with vehicle speeds here in the state, on some roads, it, oftentimes it feels like the standard is 10 miles over the speed limit. But it can't be like that. And one of the things I learned recently since getting behind the wheel of a hybrid car that doesn't go so fast is that when you slow down it gives you more of a sense of what's happening in front of you it helps you anticipate everything that's happening um, after the next red light because there's always going to be a red light to make a stop Absolutely. and you know i know a few people who who when they're driving their foot is either down on the gas pedal or down on the brakes no yeah. in between yeah. so th there's no moment to coast no moment to um, gauge what's really happening down the line in front of them, in front of the car that's, that's ahead of them. So uh, w when it comes to slowing down, there's a lot of value to that. And, you know, KMM, we are about also um, driving more responsibly, but it also helps to drive more efficiently, uh, which is an interesting point. When you do the math of um, a stretch of road and what, how much gas you're using just by keeping that pedal down or, or letting go and letting the car slow down by itself. Um, but on top of that, there is an overall safety message that goes with that too. Absolutely. So, yeah, and if I could just also say that, obviously with speed, the slower you're going, the better you're gonna be able to, to react to what's going on in front of you. Exactly. You know, if someone, if a, if a child, you know, hopefully doesn't, but if a child runs out into the street or an animal enters the roadway or a cyclist like yourself is in the road and you need time to respond, the slower you're going, you'll have a better chance to, re to react and respond in a safe manner. Right. You know, it's the same thing as tailgating. The reason why you shouldn't tailgate is because if that vehicle in front of you stops, comes to an abrupt stop, you don't have enough time, a reaction time to stop, and it's gonna cause a motor vehicle crash. So the speed limits are set for a reason. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes we're rushing. Again, it goes back to being responsible. We have to give ourselves enough time to get from point A to point B, allocating enough time for detours. 
right, and for things for for congestion and different things like that. Oftentimes, people are rushing, and when you rush, things can happen. Slow is fast. Fast is slow. Well, I'm glad you had so much to say about the, the Share the Keys program and, and how that's really affecting families and teens at home. Um, and overall, what, what we have to say here is to not just for, for folks at home to share the keys, but for everyone to share the road courteously. What can you say about um, courtesy behind the wheel here in our state? Obviously, we should think about each and every life that's behind the wheel is, is someone that we should care about whether we know them or not. So you shouldn't just drive for yourself, you should drive for others. We want everyone to get home safely, not just us and ours, but for everyone. We want to limit the, the motor vehicle crashes that occur each and every year and each and every day. We don't want anyone to have to leave home and feel like they may not return because of the actions of someone else. You know, Chris, I had a close friend of mine, a, a very close friend of mine, and I don't want to say his name, but a very close friend of mine that told me a story, and it, it really touched me, I, and I hope the people at home that's listening to this um, is really touched by it. It's sad, but he, he gave his wife a kiss. He left the house early in the morning. He gave his wife a kiss, expecting to see his wife again. His wife got into her vehicle with their children, was driving down the street, and she was involved in a motor vehicle crash with a gentleman that was intoxicated. Fortunately, the kids survived. The three kids survived in the vehicle, but my friend's wife did not survive. When he gave his wife a kiss that morning and said goodbye, he didn't know that that was going to be the last time he would see her. He didn't know that that was literally going to be a goodbye. That is something that's preventable. That's mm -hmm. something that could have been avoided. So when we drive, when we do things like consume alcohol, when we do things like text and drive, we don't realize that sometimes we're not just affecting the life of someone else that we may take but we may also be affecting the lives of their children as well. Hmm. So we have to be mindful of our actions and the decisions that we're making. Yeah, and I really appreciate that thought where um, it's not just driving for ourselves, but we should be driving for others. So the way that we handle our cars and the equipment we get behind whenever we go on the road, it's, it's also to not just protect ourselves, but also to protect the other road users as well. Absolutely. And I think that goes a long way, especially in reference to um, building a culture of courtesy on our roads in New Jersey. Yeah, absolutely, I agree. And that's what we need. We need more courteous drivers. We need people that care about each other. Mm. And if we had more of that, not only in the state of New Jersey, throughout the United States of America, I think we'll be far better off. All right, any last words to wrap up that you wanna? Oh, Chris, I'm just grateful to have this time here <laughs> to talk about something that's so important, You know, something that's so important to our society here in Middlesex County, in the state of New Jersey. Uh, but the United States of America. Distracted driving is one of the leading causes of deaths amongst teens and drivers um, of all ages. And it's something that we need to take serious and something that we really need to be mindful of. Every time we get behind this wheel, we're potentially getting behind a vehicle that can get us somewhere safely or could take the life or injure someone else. And we don't want that. All right. Well, Reggie, I want to thank you so much for your expertise and knowledge today. Uh, this has been a highly constructive conversation for me, and I've learned so much from you. And I thank you very much. And we thank our friends at home for tuning in, too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity, Chris. Thank you so much. Welcome. Appreciate it.